It's good to see all of you, and it's always good to be in God's house. I, um, I am humbled to be here and starting as your uh, lead pastor. I know there are other pastors on staff, but um, I'm the one with the big target. <laughs> and uh, we're going to work together, and I look forward to it, and I look forward to seeing this church grow and getting to know each one of you. And, and uh, I just, I'm just overwhelmed. So let me pray, and then I'll jump in with both feet. Lord, we are grateful and thankful again for all that you're doing, for your marvelous blessings. And I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us afresh. Give me grace to preach with power, with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Open our ears that we would continue to hear from you. Thank you for the praise band, for anointing them and blessing them and using them during this service. Now, Lord, I just pray that you would um, work through me. Oh, Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff. And nudge me when I've said enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I don't know where to start. I, I know you guys are checking me out. And I'm checking y'all out. Been checking you out, go, going on and going online and looking at stuff and reading and talking to former pastors and members around town. And I've been learning a lot about y'all. Can I just say that I need y'all probably more than you need me? <laughs> And I'm glad to be here, glad to be your pastor. I'm, I'm truly excited. I don't just say that, you know, because most speakers get up and they say, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I am glad to be here, and I'm excited to be here. I, I, I haven't been able to preach three times in a row and then come back to the same place the next week for eight years. I've been serving as a district superintendent, and my boss is sitting on the second row with his wonderful wife, Debbie. And uh, so no pressure, none at all. I mean... <laughs> He's probably thinking, boy, did we make a big mistake sending that yo-yo there? <laughs> Too late now, buddy. I got a year contract. No. <laughs> if, you could be, if you could be any person in the Bible, except for Jesus, we're going to leave Jesus on the side for a minute, but except for Jesus, if you could be any person in the Bible, who would you pick? Who would you pick? Now, I don't even have to think about that one. I mean, I know without a doubt, without a shadow of doubt, I don't even wrestle with, is there somebody else that would be in second place in my, in my book? Now, yours, yours may be different. Some guy came to me after the second service and said, I wouldn't be John Baptist, I'd be Peter. I'd be Peter because he's a big fisherman. You know, I'm a fisherman, I'm kind of big, and, and, and I like that guy. But listen, my guy for the money is John Baptist. I mean, wouldn't you like to have been a fly on the wall to hear that guy preach? I mean, he's out in the wilderness preaching along the, the, the riverbanks of the Jordan, and people are flocking from the city to come out and hear him preach, and he's baptizing them, and, and he's telling them all the while he's baptizing you. Now, all I'm doing is getting you ready for the main event. I'm getting you ready. I'm the warm-up act, is what he's saying. I'm the Castleton, no, just messing with you, <laughs> just messing with you. He, he said, I'm not the one. It's not about me. Do, do you realize how strange? that message is to say that it's not about me when from the time that we were this big yay even this big yay even this big you know in the stomach we, we've been told that it's all about us well I'm here to tell you this morning that it's not about me it's not about me would you do me a favor touch your neighbor and tell him say it's not about you Now, some of y'all had way too much fun doing that because you've been wanting to do it for a long time. <laughs> you've been wanting to tell them, look, look, sport, you ain't all that in the bag of chips, really. You're not. And the, the culture tells us that it's all about us. But really, the, the Bible wants you to know that it's not about you. And that's John Baptist. He's my character because he came along in the, the third chapter in the 30th verse of John. He said this, he said, he must increase, meaning Jesus, Jesus must increase and I must decrease. In other words, it's not about me, it's about Jesus. And John came in the wilderness and he said, it's not about me, it's about Jesus. Get ready, he's coming. He, the dude is so great, he says, I'm not even worthy to unlash his shoelaces. He's coming, get ready, prepare, repent. And, and that was John's ministry, that was John's message. Well, listen, the only message I bring to you, and I hope you don't get tired of hearing it, 
because I never get tired of preaching it. It's all about Jesus. Amen? Amen? It really, really, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And I want to lift him up. Because he said, if I am lifted up, I will draw, I will attract people. He said, if I'm just lifted up, he said, I will draw folks. Remember he told the the original Nick at night, Nicodemus. It takes a while for y'all to get some of this. I have to slow down my preaching. He told Nick at night, he says, says, Nick, he says, if I'm just lifted up. He says, I will attract folks. I will draw people. Now, he was talking about the cross, but Jesus attracts folks. Now, look around. I think there's some folks, I'm I'm glad you're here. I'm excited that you're here. But I think there's a whole lot of other folks that aren't here that ought to be here. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. In fact, next Sunday, that's what I'm going to be preaching. I'm going to preach a real strong, powerful, full sermon. Today, I'm just kind of talking and making stuff up as I go along. But next week... I do that when I'm nervous. But next week, I'm going to preach a full-fledged sermon about rise up and walk. We're going to talk about the man outside of the gate and help identify some people in this community that might be left out, that we ought to be reaching as a body of Christ. But John Baptist, he says, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's about knowing him and making him known. Listen, I want to be, I want to be a man of God. As your pastor, one thing I will pledge you is I will be working, working, working. I know it's not by works. Don't get into that works grace thing. But listen, I want to work hard at being a faithful servant of God. I want to be a godly man. I want to be so full of Jesus, I kid you not, that if a mosquito were to come and bite me, that sucker would fly away humming, there's power in the blood. (laughs) That's how full of Jesus I want to be. And in turn, I want you to be full of Jesus because that's what it's about. It's about knowing Jesus and making him known to a needy world. And if we do that, I believe we'll do what God has called us to do. Well, I I started by saying I'm checking you out. My niece is here. I won't embarrass her, but she said, Uncle Frank, she said, what are you going to wear that first Sunday? I said, I got a white shirt and a suit. And she said, no. She said, Uncle Frank, trust me, you need to get some color in your life. <laughs> so she, she went with me and we picked out this suit and tie and shirt. Oh, yeah. And, and, and she said, and she said, well, if you don't uh, preach good, you can at least look good. <laughs> so I don't know that I'm preaching good, but I sure look good. <laughs> Listen, but it's not about how I look. It's not about who I am. It's about whose I am. Amen? Amen. And I want to be in Jesus' care. And I want you to be in Jesus' care. And we want to continue that great legacy. You, You guys have had some wonderful pastors over the years, and I'm just thankful to be counted in the number. Amen? I had no idea, I had no idea that I was going to end up being your pastor. The cabinet got together along with the bishop, and the bishop makes appointments. We're in a point of system. We're not a called system. That is, the church council didn't get together and say, one, two, three, let's pick them and then narrow it down. No, the bishop said, and I, came, I was kicked out of the room. I wasn't even there when they made the decision. I had no part in the decision. When I came back in the room, they said, you're going to Castleton United Methodist Church, and they started clapping. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what in the world I get into? And then I started learning stuff about Castleton, and I said, there is no way on God's green earth that I can pastor this church. I mean, I, I'm serious. I'm serious. I said, I can't pastor this church. I'm not good enough. I, I don't have the skills. I don't have the whatever. I don't even know where to begin pastoring this church. And I said that to the Lord during my prayer time, during my quiet and devotion time. I said that to the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I'm, I need your help because I can't pastor this church. And I was reading a passage that morning, and I, I kid you not, the verse literally jumped off the page at me. It's a story of Mary and Elizabeth. Remember, the, the angel came to visit Mary and tell her that she's going to have baby Jesus and said, oh, by the way, your cousin Elizabeth is expecting, and she who was barren and thought that she could have no children, she's now pregnant, and she's going to have a child. And then the angel says this to Mary, for with God, Nothing is impossible. And that verse came to me, and I said, I get it, Lord. (laughs) 
You know, I, I have a hard head, but sometimes I do get it. And Lord, that's our verse. That, that's, that's what we're going to hang our hat on, that nothing is impossible with God. And so as I start learning about your church and I start learning about the mountains that we have to climb, and, I, and, and y'all, we got some mountains, Amen. We got some things that we have to overcome as a congregation. We got some big things that we have to address, but nothing is too big for God. Now, one of the reasons I'm here, I want to be be crystal clear. One of the reasons I'm here is I'm here to help you climb mountains. Let me me tell you what I mean by that. Anybody ever walk on the beach or river shore, shore bank? Anybody? I'm the only one? Okay, You've, you've taken a walk along the beach. Isn't it fun walking along? You can kick the sand, wiggle your toes in the water. You can run in and run out. You know, fun, 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 fun. Anybody, anybody can walk on the beach if you're ambulatory. If you can get around, you can walk on the beach. Can I just say that no matter how much fun that is, God has not called the church to simply be on the beach? Hello? Listen, you say amen. If you can't say amen, say ouch, okay? Amen or ouch. God has not called us to simply walk along the shore. God has called us to conquer kingdoms and, 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 and move mountains in, in the name of Christ because there's some mountains that folks are dealing with and they don't know how to deal with them. And that's the job of the church, to put our arms around folks, to love them to health and to strength, and then to put them and engage them in ministry so that we might move mountains in the name of Christ. So our job... Thank you, Jackie. I'm glad you came. <laughs> Our job is to, is to fit people. And so if you're going to do that, you got to quit walking on the, on the beach. Now, I know I'm preaching to myself now. you got to get in the gym. <laughs> you you got to go to the gym. Kyle, I was looking the other day. I don't remember this guy's name, so Google him for me and check him, check him out for me. This is a guy who, in the last Olympics, he always came in second to... What's the swimmer, guys? Michael Phelps, okay? He came in second. He went home so frustrated from the Olympics. Most people would have went home and said, dude, I got a silver medal. Dude, I got three silver medals. Most people would have went home and said, this is good. He went home saying, I'm going to beat that sucker. That's what he went home saying. I'm getting him. And so he went. They did a, they did a video thing the other day, and they showed him training. I mean, this guy was lifting 650-pound tires, flipping them over, okay? He's, he's crawling on all fours, climbing ropes. He's swimming millions of laps. I mean, he's doing all kinds of stuff. He, he took a 350-pound chain and just drug it at the end of his practice and just drug it down the street. I mean, this guy's training. So they had the first um, time trials. You know who he beat? He beat Michael Phelps. Listen, if you want to beat Michael Phelps, you got to go to the spiritual gym. Jesus said that we are to become like him. Well, that takes some training. It takes some letting some go stuff. It takes some recognizing that it's not about me. It's about Jesus increasing in me and me increasing in Jesus. And if we do that, folks are attracted to that type of Christian. They're attracted to that type of church. So that's what I mean when I say we got to get in the gym. And that means me too. I got to get my spiritual exercise. Amen. And we've got to do that as a church, and we're going to do that. I'm excited to be your pastor. I really am. I I am pumped. I am ready to go. And we're going to do this thing. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do. Are you? Amen. Well, let me tell you one more thing, and I'm, I'm done. Usually when I preach, I usually say, as I continue to close. <laughs> you know, the, that's pretty normal, because, you know, the, 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 the Bible is in the birth business. And so when you get done talking about something else, another one pops up, and you, you realize you're pregnant with thought again, and you say, i got to finish this one. i got to do this one. And so I just, I, sometimes I just sit down. I just, I'm done. Okay, I'm almost done. If I was in a black church, I'd say, I'm coming home now. <laughs> and some, somebody in the back, they'd say, bring it home, Rev, bring it home. <laughs> Henry Aaron, a great baseball player, great baseball player. Long before Albert Pujols and Sammy Sosa and all those guys that were hitting the mega home runs, Barry Bonds, long before that, the man was Henry Aaron. 
he was being interviewed, and a reporter asked him, said, uh, Henry, said, Hammer and Hank is what they called him, said, Hank, he said, uh, would you pay to see you play a baseball game? Hank Aaron's answer was no. He said, I would not pay to see me play a baseball game. The guy thought that was odd, and he turned to walk away. And Henry Aaron said, but. He said, but. He said, on the other hand, he said, I wouldn't pay to see me play one game. He said, but I would pay to see me play in a series. To see me play in a series. And the guy was intrigued. He said, well, why would you pay to see you play a series and not just one game? He goes, oh, one game. He said, nothing might happen. He said, I might not hit a home run. He said, nothing, nothing in one game. He says, but if I do a series, he said, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hammer one. I'm going to hit a homer at some point. He says, it's going to get exciting at some point. What I want to challenge you with is don't just come once in a while. Be regular. Come next Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Because we, I know I probably didn't hit a home run today, okay? But next week, we'll hit a home run, amen, for the glory of God. We'll, we'll knock that sucker out of the park, Amen. We're going to cheer, and we're going to shout, and we're going to love on God, and we're going to do ministry. We're going to be ministered to, and the power and glory of God is going to fall afresh on this place. Not because me, but because Jesus said if we lifted him up, glory to God, I preach myself happy. (laughs) If we lift him up, John Baptist said, I'm not the Christ, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Sometimes all you need is a voice. Somebody somebody ought to understand what I'm talking about this morning. It was in the beginning when the earth was without without form. It was dark, and, and, and darkness was hovering over the face of the deep. And what happened? God spoke. One single solitary voice began to make a difference, and all of creation came into being. Sometimes all you need is a voice. Sometimes people in need and they're hurting, all they need is a voice. Will it Not with your words, but you're being as a vessel, as a voice of God to talk to your neighbor, to talk to your peers, to talk to your friends, to talk to couples on your block, to give them hope, to let them know that if we just lift up Jesus together, everything is going to be all right. I'm done.